The most important element is not very different from the relationship that you are having with someone to whom or from whom you are about to buy a used computer or laptop or automobile. It's easier if you have full trust in that partner, if you can trust him or her. What we have not managed to preserve sufficiently in the transatlantic relationship over this last past period is full mutual trust. And that's too bad. I believe that almost everything starts and ends with trust. If we can work together to recreate that sense of, you know, trusting one another based on our realization that we are in fact bound together not only by the same values but also by the same challenges that we can only face together, I think then we'll do much, much better together. So I believe that the key question for our governments, for our parliaments, for our publics, for our leaders and for those who speak on their behalf will, be, will have to be an effort to, to recreate, to build trust and confidence. And the only way you do that is by finding areas where you can actually practice working together. If you, have, if you, if you work together with a person over a period of time, you develop trust. And if you don't develop trust, you know you, you don't want to work with that guy uh, anymore. So working together, finding areas of cooperation, is what it's all about. I believe there will be an enormously important window of opportunity for our two countries, for Europe and the United States, beginning, hopefully, in the morning of November the 3rd, between between the beginning of the period after your election up to the next State of the Union message, regardless of whether the current president is re-elected or whether a new administration will come in, an enormous opportunity will present itself for a reinvigorated transatlantic effort for trust building, for symbols. Uh, symbols matter not only in foreign policy, they matter in, in many other areas also. And uh, in that sense, I think we are at, a, at, at, a, at an almost historically important point. Uh, if we don't use this opportunity this winter in the transatlantic trans relationship, uh, we will not, uh, we will actually uh, really fail and I'm sure that neither the American side nor the European side has any interest in, interest in failure. A um, hundred and fifty or so years ago Mark Twain traveled through Europe I'm sure many of you have read his book of, of his travels uh, through Europe. And uh, on one of his stops in Germany, he was invited to a concert uh, presented by a young composer, not yet well known at that moment, but up and coming and rising. His name was Richard Wagner. And after the concert, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the lady, uh, the, 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 the wife of the, of the host asked Mark Twain how he liked the music. And he wanted to say something nice, so he came up with what I believe is the funniest answer anyone has ever given to a question about music. He said to her, uh, yeah. Uh, it is actually better than it sounds. <laughs> and uh, I think that the transatlantic relationship is also actually better than it may have sounded 
uh, to some of us over the last couple of years. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. The Ambassador Isinger has agreed for a few minutes to take a few questions. So uh, we don't have a microphone in the audience, so if you're way in the back, just move a little bit forward and uh, we'll entertain a, a few questions. I hope you've all heard the question. The question is, can one trust the United Nations given the scandal that has been reported about how the so-called Oil for Food program has been handled? the program which was supposed to feed Iraq but also control the oil income generated by the sale of oil uh, by Iraq during the period of sanctions before the, uh, before the war. Um, we all deplore, we all deplore uh, whatever scandalous behavior may have existed. We still don't know exactly what what went on. Certainly I don't know the details, but I suspect that we will be presented with uh, findings by the group that's led by, uh, by Chairman Fulker uh, and by other uh, investigations. That's too bad. But you know, we should be careful not can one say that in English? Uh, in German, we have this saying that says, you, you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Same, Same here. Uh, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Uh, don't blame the United Nations. Don't blame the United Nations. The United Nations doesn't exist in that sense. You know who was in charge of the control of the All for Food program? the permanent members of the, secure, of the Security Council. You know who is a leading member of that group? The government of the United States of America. Um, and uh, in other words, France, uh, Russia, China, the UK, and the United States government were in control of that program for the last almost 10 years. If, there were, if it was so easy to blow the whistle, why didn't anyone in Washington blow the whistle? Uh, in, in, in other words, let's be cautious about uh, blaming any member nation or any individual unless we have the whole picture in front of us. I would be the first to, to um, you know, to, to complain about uh, mishandling of funds and I, th I think if that's what happened at the UN, all those in charge of that ought to be severely punished. But I think we, it's, it's too easy to, to blame the abstract United Nations. We have to know who exactly it was. Was it a bureaucrat somewhere in an office or was it oversight failure? Remember, as we look at our industries, both in the United States and in in Germany, we find that we have oversight problems in our domestic markets, insurance, uh, a stock market, and in many other areas. That's a very important and difficult issue. And uh, maybe, maybe some, some failure uh, happened also in the oversight business at the United Nations. Oh, there are many questions. Gee. Hmm. That's an easy one. The question was, what, what are the, tell me if I misrepresent your question. Uh, as I understood the question, the question is, what, what are the effects, what were the effects of the intervention in Iraq uh, as seen by the rest of the world? Exactly. All right. Um, mostly negative. I'm afraid to say. But you don't want me to tell you something that you want to hear. You want me to tell you what I believe is, is a correct analysis. And I have to tell you that around the world, unfortunately, the assessment seems to be 